How you doing, fam? Man, this is Chris Mizo here. I'm here to talk about the X870e. If you're looking to build a new PC this year, you are in luck because there are a ton of new motherboards. What exactly is different about it? Well, first things first, I want to go over the MSI version of the X870e, and it's going to be pretty similar to the other versions, such as ASUS, Gigabyte, Acerock. All of those motherboards will have some similarities and there are going to be quite some differences. Now, first, I want to talk about MSI's motherboard. It is quite beautiful. In fact, they improved the PCB so much, especially around the graphics card portion of it, because they understand that graphics cards are just getting larger and heavier. In fact, they used thicker anchor points and thicker PCBs around PCI Express slots on the X16 side. They increased it by 121% over the prior generation. Because of this, all the motherboards will be a lot more expensive, such as the MSI Tomahawk is now in the $400 USD range compared to what it originally was. As it goes for the Easy Latch, we all love it. If you're not familiar with what the Easy Release is, when you install a graphics card inside of your motherboard, there is a button in there to kind of give it a quick release. It kind of has like a little spring in there to push the graphics card up to make it easier for you to remove instead of trying to push down that PCI Express latch or the M2 latch or screwing in the M2 card. Instead, they upgraded it to Easy PCI Express Clip 2. They also did it with the M2 clip to make it much more easier to install or to remove. So now the new X870e boards are all equipped with Lightning 2 PCI Express 5.0 slots. They're also included with Wi-Fi 7. It also has Bluetooth 5.4 built in. A lot of them feature USB 4. So you don't have to worry about those USB speeds, 40 gigabits per second. MSI also made it easier to hook up the Wi-Fi antenna on the motherboard as it has a quick release on there as well, instead of trying to screw it in. With MSI, they also did a project with Kingston Cam 2 Memory. And that's a really exciting feature I got to share with you guys. I have a lot more details on it if you click the card above me about the Cam 2 memory. And what's interesting about it is instead of your memory standing upright, such as you're familiar with DDR5 memory, it actually stays flat similar to what NVMe is. But again, I'll go deeper into it and it actually takes up about 70% less space. Now going into the ASUS side of the motherboards, they've also done a lot of changes to the X870e. Now a lot of them, they're gonna be pretty similar to what you heard from the MSI side. They're also going with PCI Express 5.0 X16 on two of their PCI Express slots. They also will have up to four M2 drives that you can hook up to two PCI Express 5.0 and two PCI Express 4.0 drives. It will also come standard with 2.5 gigabits per second ethernet port. The motherboard will mostly support USB 4. As I mentioned earlier with MSI, what's really similar is the fact that they will also have a lot of USB 4 ports. It will also have Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4. ASUS has also been working with Cam2 memory. They've worked with Kingston and even G-Skill. They even have a prototype out there in Computex 2024 where it showed as much speeds as up to 8,000 megahertz, which is really impressive. Now Cam2, as I mentioned, if you want to see a little bit more about that, I do have it in the card above or check down in the description box down below. Also ASUS more than likely will also follow suit. Same with a lot of these motherboard manufacturers, as I mentioned, about reinforcing the PCB around where the graphics card is to prevent any type of cracking, especially because they are becoming a little bit larger, not just a little bit, but a lot larger and heavier. A big feature between the MSI and ASUS motherboards, I gotta say what's really similar with them. If you're familiar with MSI's Project Zero, they put all the connectors in the back of the motherboard. For example, they have the motherboard headers, 
where you hook up your typical ATX 24 pin connection onto the back of the motherboard. Same with some of the other connections, such as the CPU pins, the 8 pin ones, or the 16 pin CPU pins they also have on the back of the motherboard. ASUS is also doing their own version. They're doing the ASUS BTF boards. Some of you may have seen it earlier when I went to CS 2024, and they had a bit more of a showing in a Computex 2024 about that. Now, Gigabyte has a whole list of motherboards that they are pushing out. In fact, the Wars Extreme AI, they also have the, I know a lot of you are tired of hearing about the AI stuff, including me, because a lot of it's not really AI, but that's all. That's a whole nother argument. But anyway, they had the 870E Wars Pro Ice. They had the 870 Wars Elite Wi-Fi. They got the Wars Pro. They got the AI Top. And as you can see, the list goes on and on. But to get to the point, you want to know what Gigabyte does have and what they feature. In fact, they feature up to four DDR5 RAM slots, which is not really anything new, but it is more of the standard when it comes to the X870E boards. Same with the X670 boards. Gigabyte is also focused on having two PCI Express 16 slots. They're more focused on getting Wi-Fi 7 and they are also focused on having Bluetooth 5.4. Now they will have USB 4, but Gigabyte's not really large when it comes to the USB connections such as that, but they did say that they will have more expansions when it comes to USB 4. If you're familiar with Gigabyte's Aorus Elite, for example, or some of their other prior models, that they have a USB expansion for USB 4. They will have three M2 slots on Gigabyte's X870E boards. In fact, two of them are PCI Express 5 and one of them is PCI Express 4. If you notice on the Gigabyte's motherboard, the heatsink is quite large for the uh, M2 slot for PCI Express 5.0. Another manufacturer I gotta mention is Ace Rock. They've come out with a really impressive display. I gotta admit, it looks really beautiful. They're really pushing out and showing their muscles because all their motherboards are in Computex. They were not afraid to show off what they had. And I gotta say, their designs are quite beautiful. An example is an Acer Rock motherboard has up to 27 phase power delivery, which is really impressive. DDR5 is the standard. They also will have the dual gen 5 X16 ports in them for the PCI Express side. They will also have a Gen 4 USB, up to 5 gigabits Ethernet connection. They will also feature Wi-Fi 7. Four M2 slots, which is one is Gen 5 M2, and the other three will be Gen 4. That's plenty impressive. Even has me thinking about doing an HROC build. Tell me what you think about that. Fam Mam guys, what are your thoughts about the X870E boards so far? Are they impressive enough for you, especially if you're planning to do a brand new build? If you're interested in hearing about the AMD Ryzen 9000 series, make sure you click this card above as I will talk about it more there. If you found this very useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is into PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them. And also if you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan band, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts about the X870E motherboards.